just gonna have like 30 seconds. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'll meet you backstage. Okay. You want to do your woo speech? <laughs> no, I'll save the woo speech. We don't, you can't overuse the woo speech.
Thank you so much for being here tonight. We have been on tour uh, for much of this year, actually, um, most of the fall. And we've gotten to go lots of different places, but we really, really miss New York. So it's really great for you guys to come to two sold out shows here at Joe's Pub. Yay. <laughs> we like hanging out with you. And the six train. We're starting out with two songs from my first album called Waking Hour. Last song was called The Tower. This is called Gravity. Constant satellite 
Please welcome Mr. Ward Williams to the stage. A little bit of trivia. If you Wikipedia that instrument that Alex is going to play on this song, uh, you will find his photo. <laughs> if you Wikipedia Alex Wong, though, you find a Malaysian jet ski racer. <laughs> who somebody added an addendum to his page that says, he also has an annoying voice. <laughs> and I read the page and got to that part before I got to the jet ski racing part and I got really sad. And he felt very sad, so then my friend and I got on the Wikipedia page and flagged the comment of the annoying voice saying that there was no citation to back this up. <laughs> That has nothing to do with the song. <laughs> However, um, this is a song called Blue Caravan.
Because of the grand piano, Alex and I necessarily sit kind of far apart on stage, which is kind of sad sometimes. Oh. <laughs> you had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> Is that sad? I thought you were going to uh, segue into the guitar conversation from last, oh. the last set. Well, I, I, We've, Vienna has promised on, on tape that she's going to get a guitar for spring 2010. It's going to be all kinds of wrong. But in so the meantime. So that she can rock back, back to back with musicians on stage. <laughs> right, because the other two guys on stage are so playing back to backable. It's not like they have their they don't have their own seated stations here. But um, Alex and I worked on making a record together last year and it was released this April. It's called Inland Territory. Thank you. And um, I normally write most songs by myself, which is a very slow, painstaking, bashing your head against the wall kind of process. And um, I had this beginning of a song, this piano part, that wanted to be a song, and I brought it to Alex and said, would you uh, bash your head against the wall with me on this song, and maybe we'll come up with something cool. And, uh, and it went on the album, and uh, he wrote a wonderful string orchestra arrangement for it, which Ward will now do all by himself. <laughs> and this is one of those songs where I really need to lock in with Alex, so I'm gonna be looking on that side of the stage to see if his mouth is open, because that's always a good sign. If Alex's mouth is hanging open while he's playing, it means that it's working. I feel that this may be drawing attention to the wrong things. <laughs> Everybody watch Alex on this one. I uh, also, this morning, had a session where I actually drooled. <laughs> It was like the Would cliche drummer, like ultimate drummer cliche thing to do, but I actually did drool when I was playing. Which is an extremely good sign, really. All right, this is a song called Antebellum.
so beautiful here, she says, this moment now, and this moment now. And I never thought I would find her here, flannel and satin, my four walls transform. But she's looking at me straight. She sleeps on my shoulder Hair falling forward Mouth all askew And fluorescent announcements Beat their wings overhead Passengers missing Or looking for you And she dreams through the noise Her weight against me Face pressed into
you all. For some reason, songwriting is one of those weird processes that's sort of partly in your control and partly not. And sometimes it feels like very much not. Um, and sometimes I write these songs from certain points of view that I have no business writing from. And I don't really figure out for, until later or sometimes never why I'm writing from this point of view. And what I seem to do a lot is to write love songs addressed to women. So it goes. <laughs> so this is a song in which I am writing from the point of view, at least I thought at the time, of a truck driver. And he's, uh, and he's stopping for the night in the middle of nowhere in Arizona in January. And uh, I, I don't know why his story decided to be something that I ended up telling, but here it is. His name is Walter, in case it matters. And uh, this song also has the distinction of being a song that got us to the North Carolina governor's inauguration earlier this year. It was sort of one of those things, it was an ingenious bit of management uh, promotion. Uh, they said, well, you're gonna play this one song, your song um, called Homecoming, and uh, just, just try to be evasive about questions about where you're from, personally. <laughs> You'll figure out why in a minute. But Alex and I went and did this together, so this is the North Carolina governor's inauguration version. It's a desert ice outside, but this diner has thawed my ears. Hot coffee in a clean white mug and a smile when the waitress hears that I was born in North Carolina. Just like everybody here Just wanna know a little 
flicker of time is worthwhile And I don't know where I'm driving to But I know I'm getting old And there's a blessing in every moment Bars of soap and a couple little plastic cups. Oh, Gideon's Bible in the nightstand drawer saying, Go on, open up. Well, I'll kneel down on the carpet here, though I never was sure of God. Think tonight I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And I switch off the lights and imagine that a Just outlined in the bed Her hair falling all around me I smile and shake my head But when we all write our own endings And we all have our own scars But tonight I think I see what it's all about Cause I There are two places that I've lived in my life. Um, I guess uh, the re one of the reasons I moved to New York was actually coming to visit Alex and uh, him highly recommending it for all kinds of reasons. It's a great place for music, he said, and restaurants stay open till 2 a.m. <laughs> and all kinds of other wondrous things. He painted this very rosy picture for me. Um, but I arrived and um, found that just like my home area of San Francisco, you can pay a lot of money to live in a closet. <laughs> And uh, so this song is sort of dedicated to apartment hunting in this sort of environment. And for any of you geeks out there, I stole the second verse, the second half of the second verse from a website called bash.org. <laughs> It's called One Bedroom, One Bath. Just my furniture. Oh. 
around and really liking their ideas. Look right there, right there, right there.
How are you guys doing? I do love this place, and uh, we do really appreciate you guys being here. And I think I said this, I said this last set, I've said this other sets, but it's still, I do, I'm very grateful when the uh, audience outnumbers the performers. It's a good sign. Like a drummer's mouth hanging open, it's a very good sign. Yeah, that was very. That wasn't very easy to play that song after the, uh, the <laughs> announcement. I did look over at one point, and you were giving me that like shooting daggers, like thanks a lot. She's trying to close my mouth. <laughs> this is a song called "Stray Italian Greyhound." Oh no, not now Please, not now I just settled into the glass half empty Made myself at home And so I now Please, not now I just stopped believing
tour in Germany and a couple of other European countries uh, this past spring. We were there in March. And we had a wonderful, uh, extraordinary tour manager, sound engineer, all around wonderful guy named Gert Rickman Wunderlich. <laughs> and uh, when we first met Gert, it, um, it's kind of a long story, but basically when we first met him, he was not really fully himself. He had been going through a lot of stuff right before the tour started. And uh, so our first impression of him was this very stern, very quiet, older German man who did not like to have fun at all. <laughs> like we did this first show with him and we're like, so good, you wanna go out and get a drink? You wanna, um, you know, hang out? That was pretty fun. He's like, so, perhaps we go to the hotel now so we get a good start in the morning. <laughs> so it became this competition, like which one of us could get Gerd to laugh first. Won. Well, you know, I'm actually the least funny of the three of us, but I managed to ask Garrett for German vocabulary lessons, and uh, at one point I asked him what a den of snakes was in German, and that got him. <laughs> well, he was not apropos of nothing. There was a dish called den of snakes that someone had made for us. It was sitting in the backstage, and it looked like a bunch of snakes, but it was bread. So, uh, so Vienna asked Gert, and, uh, and he cracked up at her, and, and she won. I don't know if I won anything, like material, actually, just dignity. But we found out all sorts of things about Gert later on, such as that he's a huge South Park fan. And uh, so, and what else do we find out about Gert? Well, he, he, had a, he had a special thing for Ward, actually. <laughs> Ward became his special friend. It was, totally. Was like I don't kiss and tell. International bromance. <laughs> We'd all be in an elevator together, and he would, like a small elevator, all four of us, Gert would turn to Ward and go, so Ward, want to have some cake? <laughs> and we're like... Perhaps you stay behind and have a slice of cake with me, yes? Yeah. We like, we like cake, too. <laughs> the, the line that he was most impressed with was when I went down to the lobby. He says, so, have you seen the Wong Tang clan this morning? <laughs> he had a good chuckle about that for days. <laughs> oh, Wong Tang clan. <laughs> so this song tonight goes to Gert Rickman Wundelich, whom we hope to see again. This is a song called St. Stephen's Cross.
trying to learn the guitar for a very long time and I still suck <laughs> but I'm getting better I bought a little Martin travel guitar recently and been practicing incessantly so I still sound terrible but at least I have calluses now <laughs> but once in a while I try to write a song in which I am compensating for the fact that I would like to play guitar and do not so this is kind of a guitar song that I will play on the piano <laughs> But Ward will really actually be the rock. <laughs> Ward was daring me to uh, 
introduce every song in the set like the guy in Kiss. <laughs> he was trying to teach me to do that. It wasn't really working. <laughs> That's it? You're gonna leave me hanging? Well, I was looking at Ward to see if Ward... <laughs> Do that sure, for the whole absolutely. show. <laughs> All right. Somehow you and Paul Stanley need to have a love child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, let's focus here. This is serious. point in the show where I no longer have my back to you <laughs> for one song. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, it is inc absolutely incredible. I wanted to say some thank yous um, to people who have been working very hard to put this show and the recording of it together. Um, first of all, there's John on sound. 
Sabrina doing the lights. Ryan is recording the show tonight. Ehud is uh, videotaping all kinds of stuff. Our friend Tim, who is actually Alex's cousin, has uh, flown in to hang out with us and to take photos of the evening. And of course, we also have my wonderful manager, Amy Cox, who has orchestrated the whole thing. Thank you, Amy. And a couple of other people we really want to give a big thank you to. One is our friend Kevin Rice, who is Alex's drum tech tonight. Resident rock star. Yeah, he's actually a rock star, but he just got back from like a world tour of 30 countries and decided to help Alex out on the, and us. So thank you, Kevin. And also to our friend Candice, who is uh, just helping to make sure everything runs smoothly and some wonderful volunteers who are selling merch back there tonight. So please come say hello to them and give them their props for working all evening and kind of missing most of the show. <laughs> thank you to all of them. Put your hands This song requires your participation, so feel free to make lots of noise, heckle, yell, whatever you want to do. This is called Grandmother Song. Yeah. Old oh, girl, we think you got time. You're gonna get around to it way down the line. But one step, two step, you fall behind. So you better have a good plan. Oh, girl. Think you got time? Gonna get up to wait down the line, but I'm telling you, no matter what you have in mind, you're still gonna need a man. Take it from your ground, I've been round, I've been round, I've been round. Yeah, take it from your ground, I've been round, I've been round, I've been round. No, no one's gonna take care of you in that world. You got yourself into all the good boys, honey. They're in grad school.
Thank you. No, thank you. Um, we uh, like to do this song sometimes. This is a cover song. A band called Radiohead. Is the real rock star going to join us? Oh, this is exciting. I hope so. <laughs> this isn't Union, dude. <laughs> What's the furthest most country that you've been this year, Kevin? I don't know, Russia or... Russia. Wow. Russia was uh, Japan, maybe? Where you had a hamburger at McDonald's? Yeah. At the airport? To, to Sorry, now I just said it in front of everybody. You gotta shout me out like that? <laughs> <laughs> We're also glad that you called us back because I really need to acknowledge another wonderful and very important person his name is Jordan Berger, and he is my booking agent, and he made this show possible. So put your hands together for Jordan. <laughs> Not only this show, but any tour I've ever done. Ever. It's all right, here we go.
this has been fun, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to end the song, uh, this whole evening on a pensive note, however. I guess you could leave now if you want to. <laughs> if that was the grand finale you wanted, and you just could so go out. Choose your own ending show. <laughs> They should do that. <laughs> I've almost thought of the encore as kind of the optional part of the show. Like, if you've kind of had enough by the end of the proper set, I personally will never be offended if you decide to leave after that, because you're like, okay, well, that was the show. That was enough show for me. So we are now in the strictly optional part of the evening. <laughs> both big fans of, um, I guess you could say students of the great songwriters, and uh, one that I only became aware of embarrassingly recently is Randy Newman, and uh, I think Alex has been listening him, to him for quite some time and decided to learn this song and then taught me all the hard parts <laughs> so I didn't have to figure them out. I taught them to you so that when I mess them up, you'll, I'll have like a safety. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is a this is kind of a, a song that um, I always think of in this season, and it's one that's been covered in great ways many times. But uh, it's a song that we really like. It's called uh, "I Think It's Gonna Rain Today." so much.
much. Thank you to Joe's Pub for having us. Have a wonderful holiday season. Take care and see you soon. Good night. <laughs>